Hello everyone, welcome to Advanced Knowledge System and a warm welcome to AKS IAS Academy which is one of the premier institutions in India and it offers examination coaching for UPSC CSC, State Public Service Commission, SSC Combined Graduate Level and CLAT examinations. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Thumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services I take up international relations and internal security and the analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And this session will certainly help you because I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases and thereby we will identify the factual, analytical and conceptual questions which will be useful for preliminary examinations. And while you imbibe the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing, your answers in the mains would be precise and concise and thereby you would score higher marks in the mains examination so therefore this session will certainly help you to score higher marks in the mains 2020 as well as you will be benefited to crack prelims and mains of 2021 so do follow the entire session of AKSIS Academy daily news analysis and this is of the daily news analysis of the Hindu newspaper that is today's of 14th December 2020 and before we get into the DNA we will look at the quote of the day and the quote of the day says there is nothing wrong with being a beginner so if you want to really achieve the goals or if you want to reach the top and the apex so definitely you need to have or you need to start as a beginner that means there is nothing wrong with being a beginner no one starts at the top so whatever happens is at the beginning point itself that is at the starting point and now we will focus at the analysis of the hindu newspaper and the summit would certainly take place that is the virtual bilateral summit between india and bangladesh would be taken up on december 17th and while discussing or the virtual summit that is the bilateral summit there would be discussion in regards to the connectivity projects so these connectivity projects especially they would be focusing on the chilhati haldibari rail link so this is the 12 kilometer stretch that is chilhati haldibari rail link which would be discussed or resurrection of the rail link would be discussed on the sidelines of the connectivity projects of the bilateral summits and this will be taken up after 55 years so this would be the main the connectivity projects which would be part of the virtual bilateral summit between india and bangladesh and if you look at this rail link that is chilhati haldibari rail link it is a british era line and this british era line was abandoned it was stopped after the india pakistan war in 1965 in 1965 and since then the rail line or rail link is not been into consideration or it is not been used so that now the connectivity being the connectivity project the resurrection will be discussed in regards to the 12 kilometer chilahati haldibari rail link and this rail link will be part of the fifth rail route for the connectivity projects between India and Bangladesh and it will connect Bangladesh with Bengal. So definitely this is the connectivity project which would be the highlight of the bilateral summit between India and Bangladesh. And there would be another sixth line which would be taken into consideration of the connectivity projects and it will connect from Dhaka that is from Bangladesh to Bengal that is to Siliguri and this sixth line is expected to be flagged off that means it will start on March 26 of 2021 which would be the 50th Independence Day of Bangladesh so this information is crucial for the preliminary examination point of view because we have the connectivity project which is 12 km Chilhati Haldibari rail link which will be rejected after 55 years and this 
railing is a british era and which has been abandoned after the war between india and pakistan in the year 1965 and this railing will be connecting bangladesh and bengal and the sixth line connecting between dhaka and siliguri which will be flagged off on the march 26 2021 which would commemorate the 50th independence day of siliguri and there would be other major issues apart from the connectivity projects which will be discussed is the water sharing agreement between india and bangladesh so certainly it would be the tista water sharing between india and bangladesh and along with the tista water there would be six other rivers which would also taken into consideration of discussion which will take place and these two countries will also i mean it will share the discussion in regards to the peninsula rivers that is six so these are monu river the muhuri river kowai river gomti river and also darla and dut kumar river will also be discussed as part of the peninsula rivers which would be part of the water sharing agreement between india and bangladesh and the discussion in regards to the tista tari has actually ended in the year 2011 but the signing has not been done that means the tista water river sharing agreement has not signed between india and bangladesh but the discussion has ended in the year 2011 but however the west bengal chief minister that is mamta banerji as opposed to the tista water sharing between india and bangladesh as river or the river subject is pertaining to the state subject so definitely the the chief minister of west bengal that is mamta banerji will definitely have her say or the state say in regards to the river water sharing between india and bangladesh in regards to the tista river water and six other peninsular rivers and along with the tista or water sharing agreement and the connectivity projects there would be also a discussion in the virtual bilateral summit or agreement that is on the progress on petroleum friendship pipeline so there would be a pipeline that is called as petroleum friendship pipeline which also will be discussed that will be connecting from siliguri from bengal to dinajpur of bangladesh and this has actually been agreed in the year 2018 and the construction has started last week of december or in second week of december 2020 and that would also be further discussed and this will the virtual bilateral summit also will seek to restore the momentum of ties between india and bangladesh because of the pandemic situation the global supply chain system and the economy has been badly hit between both the countries and also bit, uh, in bangladesh and also india and there were, there is another reason that the momentum of the ties has to be restored back to normalcy because of the political differences between india and bangladesh in regards to the caa that is citizenship amendment act wherein there were various hartals or uh, government has or else the people in bangladesh has revolted against the caa of which was taken up in india so there is a political differences there is connectivity issues and water sharing agreements and also the petroleum friendship pipeline will also be discussed so these are the connectivity or the infrastructure arrangements or the key points which will be discussed between prime minister narendra modi and the prime minister of bangladesh that is sheikh hasina which would have a bilateral summit on december 17 so this is in regards to the international relations that is india with its neighboring countries india and bangladesh so this you can focus is for mains and also prelims perspective and there is another news which talks about kasiranga national park and tiger reserves and now there is a new uh, exploration which can be done to the kasiranga national park that could be on boats and bicycles so definitely the kasiranga national park and tiger reserve which is the home for the one horn rhino now can be explored by boats and bicycle tracks wherein earlier the kasiranga national park and tiger reserves were explored by elephants and jeeps 
now it can be explored by boats as well as bicycle and also trekking can also be taken into consideration to make sure that the Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Reserves can be explored and this new activity that is exploring by boats, bicycle and trekking would be taken into consideration only beyond the Kasiranga core area of 482 kilometers. So the entire Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Reserves is of 1302 square kilometers but when you focus the core area of the Kasiranga it is 482 square kilometers. So this information is again crucial for the preliminary current affairs perspective. And in the month of November, the Kasiranga National Park has gone ahead with launching a boat safari at the Bumarguri area. This area is under the Nagao Wildlife Division of Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Resource. Please do understand the boat safari is being launched by the authorities in the Bumaraguri, which is definitely falling under the Nagao Wildlife Division which is again part of the Kasiranga National Park Tiger Resource. I am emphasizing on this because there could be a possibility of this question asked from geography map based for the preliminary examination about the Kasiranga National Park Tiger Resource and the area of it and the core area and where does this Bumiragori wherein the boat safari has been launched which is under the Nagao Wildlife Division and this Bumiragori is about 30 kilometers from Kasiranga's westernmost range of Bura Pahar. So you have Bura Pahar or Bumaraguri, which is 30 kilometers away from Bura Pahar, and this is now definitely part of the Nagao Wildlife Division. And there are three boating routes, which is also part of the new exploration of Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Resource and the longest one will be of 44.0 square kilometers and this will be Burachopuri Wildlife Sanctuary. So that means the, the longest of the boating routes which is of 44.06 square kilometers will be in the Burachopuri Wildlife Sanctuary which is west of Kasiranga. Again this is geography map based you can definitely get into the mode of identifying it and analyzing from the UPSC perspective and again Burachapuri is adjoining or it is part or it is of the Lakova Wildlife Sanctuary and this Lakova Wildlife Sanctuary is also part of the Kasiranga landscape as we have seen that the Nagao Wildlife Division is also part of Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Resource. So what is that you need to focus is you need to look at along with the Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Resource the core area 482 kilometers you need to also focus at the areas or the wildlife divisions. So we are talking about the National Park and Tiger Resource and we are also emphasizing on the divisions that is one of the division wherein the boat safari has been launched that is Bumaraguri is falling under the Nagao Wildlife Division and if you look at the boating routes this is Burachapuri which wherein Burachapuri is adjoining to the Laukowa Wildlife Sanctuary. So again this is the sanctuary here which the keyword here is so you have the national parks, tiger reserves and the wildlife sanctuary and you also have wildlife division. So these are the keywords which you need to focus while you are analyzing the newspaper and that is what I am trying to emphasize and make you understand the importance of the analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And there are two taking trials which is from the Natudanga, Baneshwar and the other one is 3 km which is in Chirang and both these are in the Bura Pahar range and these trekking trails that is the trekking is also possible along with the boats bicycle along with that you have the trekking so the trekking trails is of 5 kilometers and 3 kilometers in Natundanga, Baneshwar and Chirang and this trekking will be managed by the development societies 
of the concerned village that is of Burha Pahar range. So this is again crucial information on the keyword which could be part of the preliminary examination that the trekking trials which has been now part of the exploring the Kasiranga National Park and Tiger Resource are managed by which among the following they are managed by the development societies of the concerned villages which are part of the Burahapar range and the third trial trekking trial will be at Slim Kova bordering the Karbi and Long district so you have another district in the in the entire Assam wherein the Kas, uh, Kasiranga National Park and the Tiger Resource part of it is Karbi Anglong district and the main objective of going ahead with the new exploration methods that is with the boats bicycles and trekking is because they would wish to generate more revenue so that they can take care of the rhinos habitat and the community is dependent on the health of the park so the main objective of it is to generate revenue and to make sure that the community is dependent on the health of the park will also be taken into consideration. So this is in regards to the environment or ecology and that is environment and ecology perspective we have focused or analyzed from the prelims as well as mains examination point of view. And if you look at this, this is the Kasiranga National Park which is a world health heritage and you have the Brahmaputra river which is adjoining to the Kasiranga National Park. Along with that you can see various national highways which are cutting across the Kasiranga National Park wherein we have seen in the past the human and animal conflict. Human and animal conflict we have experienced this. So you have here the Nagao district, you have Sonitpur district and also Golaga district. So these are again very important from the geography map based preliminary examination perspective and you have various corridor that is Burapahat corridor and then Kanchanjuri corridor and then Pambari corridor. So the corridors are also crucial and which are very important for the prelims geography map base. So we were talking about the division here. So divisions are also important and subdivisions are also important. We have, been, we have focused that that is Naga Wildlife Division also we have focused here. And then when we look at the Naga districts very, I mean emphatically. So you have the Lokavari Beat wherein it is also part of the Wildlife Sanctuary. And then we have also looked at the Burachapuri Wildlife Sanctuary which is part of the Naga district. So these are very crucial for the geography map base. That is why I have brought in the map of the Kasiranga National Park. Again, pertaining again, we have looked at depth in regards to the Nagao district also. So this is as per the prelims geography map base, you have to analyze the news, which wherein the new exploration points uh, or new exploration methods have been introduced that is through the boats, bicycle and trekking to explore the Kasiranga National Park and the Tiger Resource apart from already existing one which is from which was explored by the elephants and the jeeps. Now the one which has been added to the existing one is by exploring through the boats, bicycle and by the definitely by trekking process. So this is very important for ecology and environment and also geography map based question. And we have a report which is by the National Family Health Survey that is of 2019 and 2015 which is of the NFHS 5. This is the fifth National Family Health Survey report of 2019 and 20 and wherein it has revealed that the sex ratio in Assam is now in favor of females that means the number of females per thousand males is now 1200 females are born during the 2019 and 20 per thousand males so definitely now the sex ratio in assam is in favor of females with 1012 females per thousand males and this is as per the survey of the national family health survey and this survey is been conducted or it is done by multinational agency the fieldwork 
which is been taken up part of the ministry of family and health or ministry of health and family welfare wherein under this the field work is been conducted by the multinational agency and the national family health survey has been revealed for the assam that is sex ratio in assam and this when we look at this survey this is not only talking about the or revealing about the sex ratio in assam it has also made it very clear that the women who are being married and many of the women are being married even before they attend the adulthood when we compare it with nh or nfhs 4 survey now the survey is the nfhs fifth one but when we compare it with the survey which was taken up by nfhs fourth in the year 2015-16 now if we compare women of assam have been found that they have been married before attaining the adulthood compared with the 2015-16 so these are the revealed facts by the national family health survey 2019-20 fiscal that is nfhs fifth one and they have also revealed that 31.8 percentage of the women have been married before the age of adulthood that is before 18 but when we compare it with 2015-16 it was only 30.8 percent so it has increased from 30.8 percentage to 31.1 percentage in regards to the women being married before they have attained the age of 18 years now when we compare the uh, being i mean the men being married the survey which has taken up that is 15 percentage were the one who have been married before they have attained the age of marriage age that is 21 years but when we compare it with the last survey that is which was conducted in the year 2015-16 nfhs4 wherein then it was i mean the last survey was 15 percentage but now the number of men who have been married before attaining the age of 21 years has increased from 15 to 15 to 21.8 percentage so certainly this is a cause of concern in regards to the being i mean the women or men being married before they attain the age of marriages that is adolescent and there is another point which you need to focus from the survey that is fertility rate also has dipped that is the number of babies born per women has dipped from 2.2 children per women when we compare it to with 2015-16 survey now in 2019-20 survey the fertility rate has been dipped from 2.2 to 1.9 percentage and even we look at the female sterilization has dipped from 9.5 percentage to 9 percentage that means the female sterilization has been 9.5 percentage in the last survey but now it is only 9 percentage when we compare it with the main sterilization it has remained constant at 0.1 percentage sterilization is that the female sterilization takes place wherein the egg cannot enter into the fallopian tubes so male same way the sperm cannot be again uh, be part of the i mean productive system or reproductive system itself and the survey has found that at the age of 6 to 59 months the children are anemic and they are of with low hemoglobin content which was earlier when we look at that is 2015-16 it was comparatively better but now the children at the age of 6 to 59 months are more anemic and are with low hemoglobin count so the keywords here are national family health survey and then it is the one which is in regards to the being married before attending the adulthood and then it is the sex ratio which we need to focus and this is in regards to the total fertility rate is the keyword female sterilization male sterilization and anemic and low human human hemoglobin count so these are the keywords which you need to focus for the prims perspective which is 
a survey or a report by the National Family Health Survey. And there is another survey which is also part of it of the National Family Health Survey 5 report which says that the 15% of men still consume alcohol in a state wherein it is total dry that is in Bihar. That means the survey has revealed that 15.5% men above 15 years of age do consume alcohol in a state wherein it is totally banned that is consuming alcohol is totally banned by the state government in Bihar but still as per the National Family Health Survey NFHS5 report says that 15.5 percentage of men above 15 years still consume alcohol that is in regards to the alcohol they consume and when we look at using of tobacco 48.8 percentage of men above 15 years still use tobacco and 5 percentage of men of women do consume the, the alcohol and also the tobacco so the report also says that 77 percentage of women have their own bank account and 51 percentage of the women have the or they use the mobile phones so here the keywords what you need to focus is the national family health survey 5 report it is about consuming alcohol using of tobacco and then having own bank account and using of the mobile phones as per the latest national family health survey and the prohibition of alcohol has been that is it has been enforced in the year 2016 in Bihar in or through the fam prohibition and excise act that means the banning of consuming of alcohol was enforced in Bihar in the month of April 2016 by the prohibition and excise act and the NDA government led by Nitish Kumar then has come up with the provision of the one who violates the prohibition and excise act will have a minimum of 10 years of jail term but still as per the report we have the data that 15.5 percentage men do consume alcohol even in the dry Bihar state and over 2 lakh peoples have been arrested and these 2 lakh peoples are mostly from the poor marginalized class of society for violating the prohibition and excise act of 2016 and this new law has confiscated 30 lakh liters of alcohol in the dry state so this is again in regards to the health or family health survey being taken up so this is again crucial for the mains perspective and we have another news which is of the rare myristica swamp tree frog it is a tree frog please do understand it is a tree frog and it is a rare arboreal species which is endemic to the western guards western guards and the myristic swamp tree frog scientific name the scientific name of the tree frog is mercurana myristica polsteris so this is the keyword or this is the keyword which is the scientific name of the tree frog that is a rare arboreal species which is endemic to the western guards and it, the scientific name is mercurana myristica polsteris and this has been recorded for the first time in the north shenkota gap that is in a reserve uh, forest that is which has been found in the or recorded in the Wazakhal Reserve Forest in Kerala's Thrissur district. So this is again a crucial information for prelims perspective that is the scientific name and it is an arboreal species which lives on the plants that is why it is called as a tree frog and it is recorded for the first time in the Wazakhal forest area or forest reserve forest in the Thrissur district of Kerala and the calls or the sounds of these frogs were identified by a study which was 
first time it was in the Wazakal Forest Division in the year 2018. It was recorded now for the first time, but the calls of these frogs, frogs were identified in the year 2018. And these frogs were spotted first time in the year 2013 in the Myristica swamps of Aripa, that is, which is very close or near to the Kulatupuza reserve forest. So, the reserve forests are important here, which is at the western foothills of Agastamalai in the Kolam district of Kerala. So, we need to identify the districts where it was spotted for the first time in the year 2013 in the Agastamalia western foothills in the Kolam district of Kula. Kulatupuz of Reserve Forest and it was recorded for the first time in the Wazakal Reserve Forest in the Trisho district and it was the calls were identified in the year 2018 in the Wazakal Forest Division. So the division, Reserve Forest and the districts and the years are crucial for the prelims UPSC perspective in regards to the identifying the calls spotting for the first time and recording for the first time that is the myristica swamp tree frog which wherein the scientific name of the tree frog is mercurona myristica polystris and this exploration has been recorded identified and it has been published in an international journal which is dedicated for the studies of reptiles and amphibians and we will look at the unique trait of the, the new tree frog. That is, it is a rare. These frogs are rare and elusive because they are arboreal. The frogs are arboreal. What do you mean by arboreal? That means they live in trees and they will be active only for a few weeks while that is during the breeding season. And while or during the breeding season, they will descend. Descend in the sense they will come down from the trees and they will come on to the surface of the land. And this large aggregation of the males do happen. That is they descend, they come down from the trees or the canopy of the trees in the breeding seasons. And this breeding season starts in the pre-monsoon that is in the month of May and ends before the June month. And after the breeding season is over, the female frog, that is the female tree frog, Myristica swamps, they dig the mud and they lay the eggs in the shallow burrows in the mud. And after the breeding and the laying of eggs is completed by the female tree frog, they retreat back. That means they go back to the trees. They go back to the trees or they climb the canopy of the trees and that is the high canopies of the trees and they remain elusive that means they will be on the the canopy of the trees or they will be arboreal for the till the next breeding season that means from june or after the june that is june july again till may they will be living on the trees itself so this is a unique trait of the Myristica tree frog wherein the name scientific name of the swamp tree frog is Mercurana Myristica polystris. So these are the keywords which you need to emphasize while you are analyzing for the prelims and mains perspective. And you have another news which talks about that the China's spacecraft now that is the China's moon spacecraft now which has been on to the moon or lunar he is heading back to the earth and this chinese spacecraft which is called as shanks 5 now will carry the rocks and the soils which it has collected from the moon and it is it has begun its journey back to earth and this Chinese spacecraft that is Chang Fai was launched on November 24th and the lander vehicle has touched the moon on December 1st. So the launching is very important for the prelims perspective 
on November 24 and the touching that is the lander of the vehicle has touched on the moon on December 1st and this entire mission is expected to take around 23 days in total. So these are all crucial information in regards to the science and technology preliminary perspective and the plan of the mission is to collect 2 kgs of samples of rocks and soils from the moon but how much it is carrying is not still disclosed by the Chinese officials in regards to the the Chinese spacecraft Chang Fai which is carrying rocks and soils which has started or begun its journey back to earth from the moon and the China National Space Administration has said that the engines of the Chang Fai probe were ignited 230 kilometers from the lunar surface early on December 13, 2020 and they were ignited just before they were being shut down for 22 minutes wherein the craft was on the trajectory towards the earth. So initially it was shut down for 22 minutes that means the engines of the Chang Fai were shut down for 22 minutes wherein it was to the trajectory trajectory towards the earth and later on it was ignited 230 kilometers from the lunar surface on December 13, 2020 and now China is on the course to become the first country to successfully retrieve the lunar samples since it was 1970s. So the other countries which have been part of it is United States and Soviet Union which has successfully retrieved the lunar samples from or samples to their respective countries and now the successful landing of the China's spacecraft that is Chang Fai would be in the inner Mongolia and this once it lands successfully and then it retrieves the lunar samples successfully it would be the only the third country to retrieve the lunar samples after United States and Soviet Union. So this is again an information in regards to the space and technology, space or the science and technology also. So this information has certainly been an informative, knowledgeable one and now we will recapitulate what we have discussed. So this was in regards to the international relations that is between India and Bangladesh, the relations between India and Bangladesh in regards to the connectivity and infrastructure. And we have again looked at the various new mains to explore Kasiranga National Park and the Tiger Reserves by boats, bicycles and trekking. And this was in regards to the National Family Wealth Survey which has taken into consideration how the sex ratio in Assam has increased that is more females per thousand males and we also looked at the number of men still who consume alcohol in the dry state of Bihar this is again as per the report so the reports are crucial for the preliminary perspective and also mains point of view that is from UPSC examination point of view and we have also looked at the rare tree frog that is which was found in the Trishur. We have looked at what in the year 2013, 2018 and again 2020 how it was recorded. So these are the years which are important for the preliminary examination point of view and the scientific name of the Myristica swamp tree frog. And this is in regards to the space and technology which we have looked at that how important or how China would be on course to become the third country to successfully retrieve the lunar samples back to the earth after United States and Russia after 1970s and the name of the spacecraft Chang Fai. So I hope this was very informative knowledgeable and this was certainly in regards to the micro and micro level preparation so i would say a very big thank you to all and also to a good luck to all to one who are preparing on to all the civil servant aspirants i would wish to say that do maintain consistent 
consistency stick to your schedule and then take care of your physical health and mental health and i would say do like the video share the video and subscribe the aks ias academy english medium youtube channel and also have access to the website and then also subscribe the telegram link of advanced knowledge system and i would say i would come up again with the daily news analysis tomorrow so till then i would say thank you very much and then do get into the mode of consistency preparation thank you thank you very much